Walter Disney was born on December 5, 1901 in Hermosa, Chicago, Illinois. His father was Irish-Canadian and his mother was German-American. Disney was one of five children, including four boys and one girl. He lived the majority of his childhood in Marceline, Missouri, where he began drawing, painting, and selling pictures to friends and neighbors. At the age of 10, his family moved to Kansas City, where Disney later developed a love for trains. He would begin working with the railroad in the shadow of his uncle Mike Martin, selling snacks and newspapers to travelers. Disney's family moved back to Chicago, where he attended McKinley High School, taking drawing and photography classes, becoming a contributing cartoonist for the school paper. Outside of his life in high school, Disney attended courses at the Chicago Art Institute. At the age of 16, he dropped out of school to join the Army. However, he was rejected for being underage and instead joined the Red Cross. In 1918, Disney returned back to Kansas City to follow a career as a newspaper artist. His brother Roy Disney got Walt a job at the Pesman Rubin Art Studio where he met cartoonist UB Ert Iwerks. After that, he worked at the Kansas City Film Ad Company, making commercials based on animation. Around the same time, he began to play with a camera, doing hand-drawn animation, deciding to open his own animation business, later recruiting Fred Harmon as his first employee. Walt and Harmon made a deal with a local theater in Kansas to screen their own cartoons, later bringing huge popularity to their names. The cartoons were called Laughograms, and they allowed Disney to acquire his own studio. Disney and his newly hired employees made a series of seven-minute fairy tales called Alice in Cartoonland. Unfortunately, in 1923, Disney's studio was forced to announce bankruptcy. Disney and his brother Roy decided to save their money after filing bankruptcy and were able to move to Hollywood with Iwerks and begin the Disney Brothers Studio. Disney and his two partners would later make a deal with New York distributor Margaret Winkler selling their Alice cartoons. With the success came the creation of the character Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. A few years later, Walt married an ink and paint artist named Lillian Bound. Disney discovered that Margaret Winkler had stolen the rights to Oswald along with all of the Disney animators except for Iwerks, leaving him with nothing. Right after that, the Disney brothers overcame their setback and created a new character called Mickey Mouse. The first few cartoons were silent, causing them to fail in distribution. However, when sound made its way to Disney's films, the Mickey Mouse cartoon called Steamboat Willie became an instant sensation. Flowers and Trees was the first cartoon in color that helped Disney receive an Oscar award. In 1933, Disney's animation of The Three Little Pigs and its theme song, Who's Afraid of the Big Bad Wolf became a theme for the country during the Great Depression. The Tale of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs became the first full-length animated film that Walt Disney ever produced. In spite of the Depression, the film still produced $1.499 million and won a total of eight Oscars. Over the course of the next five years, Disney produced four more full-length films, including Pinocchio, Fantasia, Dumbo, and Bambi. No, that's a flower! Flower! Disney experienced a minor setback when many Disney animators went on strike in 1941, causing many employees to resign. It would take years for the Disney company to fully recover. Thankfully, Disney's company did recover, and over the course of 10 years, Disney produced more films, including Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan, a live-action film called Treasure Island, and Lady and the Tramp, as well as Sleeping Beauty, 101 Dalmatians, and Mary Poppins, which included both animation and live-action. After the production of very successful films, Disney had a plan to open up a theme park for families. In 1955, Disneyland opened at the price of $17 million. In a short period of time, Disneyland was attracting not only people from the United States, but people from all over the world. This is not Santa's workshop. 
It's just one section of a creative world where new attractions for Disneyland are conceived. Now, a great deal of time, sweat, and a few tears were expended on all this, but there's a lot of satisfaction in developing ideas into reality, which become a part of Disneyland. Now, we've just finished the first year of our second decade. It was a big year for the opening of many new attractions. Since they were opened, seven million people have enjoyed them. So we'd like for you to see and enjoy them too. But first, let's turn back the calendar to the beginning of Disneyland's second decade. I never dreamed that Walt Disney would die. I Walt died. Let him. It was many times more devastating than that. That's how months later I me. wake up crying and thinking, I lost Walt. I could only cry if I woke up without knowing I was going Studio to be crying. I felt that uh, we were that he was still there because I know in in some of the meetings, uh, somebody said, "Well, Walt wants this." And what was Planet is privileged on. enough to see a movie, a Disney movie, gets, it obviously is a legend that will never ever die. When he died, it was devastating. After the death of Walt Disney, his brother Roy carried on the legacy and finished the second theme park and Walt Disney World opened in 1971. Today, Walt Disney World employs 58,000 people, and on average, $1.1 billion are spent on payroll and $478 million on benefits for employees each year. In 2013, Disney reported a $6.8 million profit. On average, over 130,000 people visit the Walt Disney World theme parks each day. In 2013, the Disney Company reported a stunning $45 billion revenue. For one to purchase stock in the company could cost an individual $89 or more. Along with the company and theme parks, the television channel Disney Channel has over 2 million viewers a day, beating out Nickelodeon by a landslide. Giving back to the community is one of Disney's founding principles. In 1983, the Disney Company created a program built of volunteers called Disney Volunteers who have given more than 8 million hours of service over the years. In 1995, the company also founded the Disney Worldwide Conservation Fund. The company has also established relationships with the Boys Club of America, now known as the Boys and Girls Club of America, the U.S. Marine Corps Toys for Tots program nearly 60 years ago, and St. Joseph's Hospital. <laughs> 